dignitaries on the dais, Dr. Ramesh Bhatt, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Sri Shalin Devatya, Professor Amita Vaidya, Dr. Meeta Chinta Maneni, members of the faculty, students, their families and friends. Last year's IGIDR batch wrote to me that since they were not able to give a physical farewell to their seniors, they wanted, me, they wanted to set up an e-wall of messages and asked me to write one message to put up on this e-wall. I said that the outgoing batch represents our victory over the virus. They were able to graduate despite COVID-19. I am very happy to join the convocation of the Sarla Anil Modi School of Economics and congratulate all of you for a similar victory. The Vice Chancellor and Director have told us how the university met the challenges. It is wonderful to hear about the many achievements of NMI, MS and SANSO in a relatively short time. A time of uncertainty and change in education is an especially difficult time for the young. When you are 20, two years can seem a lot, but in a career of 50 years, it washes out. But provided you keep working and learning, Something like COVID-19 teaches valuable lessons that your safety depends on that of others, that change is the only constant, that difficulties will come, but it is possible to adjust, adapt and overcome. Every crisis brings new opportunities. For example, this uh, Zoom address to the convocation this mixed ceremony that you are having. I was watching the webcast on your website. It was really heartening to see the way social, the way society came together and rose to the occasion. Social media helped in many ways. <clears throat> and education in economics gives you powerful tools of analysis ways of thinking with rigor that is much more useful than just banks of knowledge, especially when information keeps changing and is generated in very large amounts. Samso's emphasis on learning by doing is one of the best ways of learning. I will share some of my experiences in working and learning, since they might be useful to the outgoing batch. Both concepts and context matter. I often use abduction, which is a way of thinking where you find the framework that is consistent with new facts being generated, which would otherwise be puzzling. Abduction lies between induction and deduction and shares features of both. It uses facts as well as logic. So it's a very useful way to generate many ideas and solutions for problems. There are so many puzzles in India's development path in macro and fiscal policies, which, uh, which this, this framework has helped me to think about. A decision rule which has worked for me is to go in and if you see something that needs to be done, especially something where you can contribute. I also find that problems dissolve if you keep moving and doing. A rolling stone does not gather moss. It helps also to have many irons in the fire. Women as well as academics are especially forced to do this and they become quite good at it. A lot of my younger colleagues say that it is really challenging being in academics. You know, you have to organize, uh, you have to work on your own, alone, thinking. You have to teach large groups. You have to organize many events. You have to interact with colleagues from all over the world. But I find that multiple tasking, can, one, one thing can energize the other. 
and then one is uh, going slow, the other will be going up. So you always have something happening. I was uh, at, at an award ceremony where I was being given an award. The chief guest saw my uh, CV, had, had read my CV, and he was saying that such a large number of publications, how did you do it? So I said that when you just keep working, things just happen by themselves, drop by drop when ocean is filled. So that is the advice I would give the young, just keep working on things that interest you, that set you thinking, that can contribute to society. It may be a time of challenges for the young, but it is also a time of great potential for them, especially in India. India's major growth advantage comes from its demographic profile. In an increasingly aging world, there will be a premium on youth, talent, and entrepreneurship. India has all this in abundance. A European professor who was visiting us recently, this is before COVID, when everybody was locked inside their houses, was saying that when you come to India, you see so many young people. That is not there any longer in Europe. It's a similar story in Japan. I think America does well because it's more open to immigrants. And a lot of Indian students and IT experts, etc., go there. So this energy of youth can find opportunities provided there is some basic support. A steady improvement in different kinds of infrastructure and systems provides this support. For example, recently one puzzle, as I said, there are puzzles in the stylized development facts that make me start thinking. So one of the puzzles recently is that agricultural exports have risen sharply. You know, I mean, we always we, we keep saying that agriculture is doing so badly, there's so much poverty, we've seen the farm agitation. Yet in this very year, there's a very and in and COVID when which affected you know so much of transport. But in this year and the past few years, you've seen a sharp rise in agricultural exports. Overall, India's export growth is already overtaking its 2019 levels. When you see if the economy has recovered, because last year, everything was down. So comparing with last year, like this quarter results are going to come out, you're expecting something 20% rate of growth. But it's just because it was as much negative last quarter. So when you compare rates of growth with 2019, you are confident that things have actually improved. But I think this infrastructure is one better, better rural roads partly explain this. So, so just as in sports, more openness and exposure to the world, better coaching and training infrastructure have given India its largest tally yet in Olympic medals. So again, the young has shown us what they can do when they get the infrastructure. And I'm happy to learn about all the facilities and the opportunities that NMIMS is giving the young. And to see so much, uh, you know, thinking and advancement in India's uh, academic institutes. Because in India, we have to strain against many obstacles. And as they dissolve, the same effort can achieve so much more. When I was doing my PhD, which was many, many years ago in Bombay University, then um, I had to do a computer simulation. And Bombay University had a lot of money. Uh, but they were waiting for com to buy computers, but they were waiting for computer prices to fall. So they were not buying. <laughs> and I was wondering, now where do I do this? So I went to the Tata and the TIFR you know, to see if I could work over there. And then finally, my son was small then, and we bought a small ZX Spectrum. I don't know if any of you are familiar, which is used for games. And I could actually work out my simulations on that. Now at a click of a button, we can do so much. But sometimes we joke, for example, in econometrics that students, because they can do things so simply, they don't really understand um, you know, in econometrics, you can just do Alt F4 in a software and get reams of output. So then you don't understand the data as well. You don't think as much about what these tests are. 
so that is why you need some some obstacles some delays you know which give you time to think so um so true education also teaches tolerance openness respect for diversity and for facts such an education is necessary to improve the national debate so that it sheds more light than heat people listen to and learn from each other rather than talk past each other in set ideological positions so the other uh, concept i find very very useful is is that of balance you know between extremes because otherwise you are not thinking you are not looking at the data you are not learning your positions are all preset so this youth with this such an education can best preserve the country's heritage as well as its institutions as they work towards a much better future for themselves and for the country this ceremony is giving you a badge of such an education from one of the best institutions i wish you all the best in the years ahead it's it can be a wonderful journey you don't know how the country will change and you will be helping you will be contributing and participating in all this so keep learning and doing best wishes thank you